Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is another Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, we've got a bit of a whopper of a, a shard pool event this weekend. So we've just been told there's a times 10 event as always on this kind of cycle. We go times 10, times 2, times 10, times 2. Times 10 event basically means that you will have the same as normal chance to get epics and legendaries. But if you pull a legendary, you will have 10 times the chance of pulling one of these guys. Same with the epics. So that's going on as normal. I'm going to go through those champions and tell you if I think it's worth pulling shards for. But they're also doing a different system. Uh, and it's the first time they've ever done this. And it's on the face of it, it's pretty exciting. Um, if you walk away from your own emotion for a second, maybe it's not as exciting as it sounds. But we will get to that uh, shortly. So yeah, so what type of champions have we got for the times 10 then? Um, pretty much looking through them, I feel like they've tried to pick out champions that are maybe just good for Doom Tower. I can't really see the other correlation here. Um, but there's a couple in there which are absolutely brilliant. Like, if you don't have them and you're struggling with Doom Tower, there's a couple in here which are going to massively move your account on. So you have to make your own decisions on this stuff. You also need to bear in mind that in a week's time, literally a week, no, less than a week's time, like five days' time, they are launching the next fusion. And the next fusion looks really good. Um, so for those people that have been saving their resources, saving their, their, um, their gems, saving their silver, saving their potions, all that type of stuff, farming your food, now's like make or break time. This is it. If you burn all of your shards in this event this weekend, then you probably won't get the fusion. Okay, you just need to... Make a decision here. Do you care enough about the new fusion that you're going to sacrifice other stuff? Um, and we're starting to see some bits coming through in the data mining. Interestingly, in the data mining so far, there are no new rares. That we've seen new epics and we've seen a legendary, fuse, the actual legendary and another legendary. So we know there are some new champions. I'm not going to go into that on this video, but we have not seen any new rares. So that means one of two things. They're either going to add them in late and there'll be like four new rares that cover all of the fusion or they're going to be using existing rares. Now, if they do that, it's a bit brutal because I don't even... Have, I just have stopped keeping rares because I've been keeping a bunch of epics. Maybe it's the wrong idea, but yeah, it's definitely new epics, but it's there's no new rares in the file. So just bear that in mind. Um... The other thing is, if like if you burn your shards now, you probably won't have enough points or enough um, access to get the fusion unless you, you buy more. That's pretty much where we're at. So that's your decision. But anyway, what's the big event? I've rambled a bit. They are doing an extra legendary event. First time they've ever done it in the game. Basically, if you pull a legendary over the weekend with an ancient shard, it's only ancients, yeah? If you pull a legendary, you are guaranteed to get another one straight away. So you get two for one on legendaries. It's from the reading here, it says uh, the algorithm is simple. If you summon a legendary champion from an ancient shard during this event, you'll get a different extra one from the same shard. It only works once per event. You won't be charged extra silver for the extra summon. Although keep in mind the extra champion won't be counted towards quests, events, or tournaments, and won't reset your mercy, mercy system counters. Um, I feel like you've already just reset your mercy system anyway because you've pulled a legendary already. But anyway, um, from, from the way it reads, that's all we've got. From the way it reads, it's totally random, the extra legendary you've got, which is pretty cool. And it's so tempting. Like, the gambler in me is like, wow, two for one. Yeah, two for the price of one. Let's go. We've got a bog off event going on. Um, buy one, get one free. But when I then switch my brain on, I realize that when they turn on two times chances on ancients, you kind of got two for one anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like, wow, we get double chance. So... The chances of putting a legendary are still half of what they would be when they do a two times. So bear that in mind. It's like I'm going all in. I'm all in at the casino, guys. I'm either going all in to get two for one and get lucky or not. So it's up to you guys what you want to do. If you want to pull shards for this, 
Um, but do bear in mind that fusion is round the corner. Don't come crying to me if you don't have any shards because you pulled them all for this stuff. Um, I'd say if you're definitely not able to get the fusion, if you're just too early in the game or whatever, then pulling shards for this event is actually a really good idea because it might get you two legendary champions and you probably need new champions anyway if you're new into the game. So it feels like it's pretty good. Let's get into the different champs that are in the 10 times because some of these are pretty game changing, I'd say, especially the epics. The epics, they pulled out some very good ones. So let's pull up the epics. First one up, just got himself out of his vault for me, Brask. Brask is kind of like a low-key healer, um, can help you through the early to mid game, and after that, he drops off massively. But what he is good for now is to come in and have a pop at the Griffin. Now, he does fill his own turn meter a bit, so you do have to bear that in mind. The Griffin will fill his turn meter on the same basis. But this A1 heal and only two abilities that can go on cooldown um, only two abilities to use, sorry, is pretty good against the Griffin. Uh, I used, I'm using him right now. He's in my team, and he works out to be a pretty decent healer uh, if you build his crit rate up, get his HP high. So his, his HP is where the heal comes from, so heals all allies by 10% of his max HP whenever he inflicts a crit. So you don't even need crit damage on him. You just need high HP, high crit rate, and then plenty of speed to get him moving. So yeah, he is actually pretty decent you can put him in um like um avenging gear retaliation gear or you can just go with high speed doesn't need any accuracy in his build pretty simple champion to build and will get you a lot of healing where you need it you definitely need to stay above half health against the griffin so he's come out of my vault now and it's pretty good for that the second one on the list is literally the queen of the doom tower she's also just generally good by the way but in the Doom Tower, she is coming out strong. She's coming out fighting. Doom Priest. I talked about her yesterday on my best epics video. She's got more clout now than she's ever had before. This passive is insane for Doom Tower. Every time she gets a turn, she takes one random debuff away from your team. So if your te team are getting stunned, if they're getting frozen, if they're getting brought cooldown skills on them, if they're getting poisoned, you know, it doesn't matter what it is. She cleans one layer of that debuff off every single turn. And that's all you need her to do. The rest of her kit is kind of average, really. It doesn't do a lot. The rest of her kit is very old school epic. But she doesn't take that many books. And she doesn't really need booking at all. So good base stats. She's definitely a champion worth pulling shards for. She would make a big difference to your account if you're struggling to get through those uh, Doom Tower bosses, for sure. She's also really good for this faction, for Faction Wars. Um, and she's also one of the best cha uh, champions in the game for when you switch from Void Affinity Clan boss to any other affinity. As long as she's the fastest in your team, she will go first. She'll cleanse off any stun, any decreased speed, any poison, decreased accuracy. She cleans it straight off and then it's basically as if you're fighting a Void Affinity Clan boss. So Doom Priest, certainly worth pulling shards for if you don't have her. Next one up is actually a Void Champion. And uh, I really like this champion, especially um, good now for the new Doom Tower boss, the dragon, Irigoth. has got this ability to lock out um, two, two of the skills. Uh, sorry, lock out the abilities of the dragon for two turns, which basically turns uh, pushes it to max lockout, yeah? Um, he's also great at going second in your arena team and locking out the opponents you're facing. He's like a mini warlord. Um, he's also insane for faction wars here. He's kind of just generally good for wave content. If you're going up against waves of enemy, pushing their turns back two turns, their, all of their cooldowns back two turns, just forces everyone to use A1s. And if everyone's using A1s against you, you've got a good chance of winning the fight. So very strong. He actually hits pretty hard as well. Got block buffs on his A3. He's a void champion. So this is void shards. Would I pull just for this guy? Honestly, if you do not have a champion that does increase the cooldown of all skills and you're struggling on Irigoth, I feel like he's probably the best one. I feel like he's probably the best champion out there to do it. So he's also doing AoE damage to all of the other adds that pop up, the, the priest and stuff. And he does hit hard. So look, up to you guys, but I feel like this is a champion that's possibly worth pulling voids for as well. 
Um, okay, let's move on to another one of the epics. So we've got Golden Reaper here. Um, I'm not a massive fan of Golden Reaper. She does have this ability to reduce the cooldown of one of your skills. She does have an AoE decrease attack, which is nice. And she does have a turn meter boost and a speed boost. So all of that's good. She's got good base speed. Um, I don't know why I'm not a big fan of her, really. Every time I try to push her into some content, I just always end up coming back to High Cartoons does this job better or Apothecary gives me a heal. I, I never really feel like she adds me enough value, but I guess the, the AoE decrease attack is big. Um, decrease the turn meter of, tw of each target by 20% if they're not under a decrease attack debuff, which is cool as well. I guess she's cool. I just haven't, I, maybe I've not given her enough, enough love. Um, but yeah, pretty good champion. And we have got Inquisitor Shamal. Honestly, such a good champion for uh, Arena, Doom Tower. Um, he just kind of like, he's got a kit unlike anyone else's. One of the cool things about his kit, he's got this passive where your allies cannot be feared or true feared. Instead, um, each critical hit, this champion, oh, sorry, whenever an ally receives fear or true fear, um, they will remove it instantly and fill their turn meter instead. Super cool, actually. If you're up against Mashald in the arena, this just completely negates Mashald. Um, a lot of Doom Tower waves where you've got those fears procking, removes them off. Also, the new boss now that fears you on his A1 removes it off. Um, for Doom Tower waves, he can just slice through a tank if you build him right. So he does a ton of damage. He ignores defense, slice through a tank, kill the tank, and then true fears everyone else. Uh, he's got this. Each critical hit fills his own turn meter. So you can get multiple crits going here. And then he's got this counter attack ability. Whenever someone gets 50% um, chance of decreasing duration of a random buff on a target, every time an enemy places a debuff on an ally, he uses this skill against that enemy. So any debuff coming against you, he, he counter attacks them with this A1, uh, reduces their, their buff count, and... Um, hurts him pretty hard. It's only a 50% counter attack, but still, it's really strong. So yeah, he's he's a great champion. And again, if you're going to pull shards, he would be a good one to get actually. And that is it for epics. So really strong epics. Like all of those are pretty top tier epics, I'd say. So if we look then at legendaries, first one up is one of my favourite champions in the game. Altan doesn't get enough love, I think, but. The trouble with him is he's all, all kind of single target stuff, but he has got a slamming A1, one of the hardest hitting A1s in the game. Um, you throw him into clan boss, you build his defense up, you build his crit rate up, and he hits that clan boss for 100k a pop. Um, he's also got one of the most consistent decrease attack abilities in the game. 75% chance if you book it out. So if you're doing like a standard clan boss setup, he's a great champion to pull. He's got this A2 as well, which is another slam. It hits hard, gives your team increased defense once it's landed. Um, if he kills someone, he also shields your team with this ability. Places a shield on all allies for two turns. It's 20% of their max HP if he kills anyone. For faction wars, this is very like clutch. And then he's got this passive. If he kills someone, he revives someone else on your team. This can be a game changer in the arena. It can like swing the battle. Um, yeah, it's really cool. If he kills someone when everyone else is alive, he just resets the cooldown of the the um, the A2. So very cool champion. Always been one of my faves. Great aura as well. Yeah, love him. Uh, next one up is another big champion. Actually, uh, where's this guy here? No, here. Another big champion. One of my faves again. It's like they're picking out my favourite list. Septimus. This guy hits harder than anyone else in the game. To one shot the spider. If he's built right. Can help your team in clan boss with this passive. Great for Doom Tower. Great for any boss encounter with this A2 enemy max HP skill. Just an absolute crazy damage dealing megalomaniac. Uh, he's also got this extra reset ability on his A1. So you kill someone with the A1. He goes with it again, goes with it again, goes with it again until, until they're all dead. So he can be built to be an absolute menace, an absolute machine. 
I love him. He's probably my favorite champion that I own. So there you go, Septimus. Uh, really cool. We've also got a counter-attack champion in the list. Marta. How much are they tempting you to pull shards over this event? Get one legendary, get one free. And basically, all of these champions are top draw. They're doing a great job at enticing us in here. Marta, team counterattack, only needs one book. That's why she's so good here. One book to activate this. It's very cool. If you're struggling with clan boss and you get Marta, she makes the day tons easier. Tons easier. Also brings a decreased defense. Also brings an AoE decreased attack and provoke. She's super strong. She's an absolute team carry. Brilliant champion. So yeah, another great champion. The only thing that lets her down is her speed. But she's got a mammoth high uh, defense. Very high HP. She's a clan boss legend. And she's kind of good as a carry anywhere through to the end game. In the end game, you probably won't use her. I don't. But up until that point, she's an absolute carry through all content. Okay, two more then. Two more whoppers. First one up is Bad Elkazar. Was thought of as the best champion in the game for a long time. They've released a lot of champions since then. But he's still insane. Insane. Only two abilities. Only one ability that can cool down. And it goes on a three turn cooldown. You recycle this very fast. Literally only requires seven books. This is what you want from a legendary champion. Please, Plarium. Redo this. AoE A1 with a heal. Um, continuous heal on poison A2. It's fantastic. And then everyone in your team does 20% more damage whenever there's a poison out there. Fantastic. Great champion. Huge stats. Can use him anywhere in the game. Anywhere in the game. He's a healer. He's a damage dealer. Um, particularly good on clan boss, particularly good on dragon. Good to set up a high damage spider team. Can carry you through. Uh, really good on ice golem as well, to be fair. He's just an out and out, and out beast of a champion. Um, I wouldn't say he's got any kind of special correlation towards Doom Tower. I think he's just an out and out good champion. So, yeah, probably worth pulling shards for like super good champ. So the last one up then is an orc. It's uh, another void legendary, Angar. Angar, I mean, I've got Angar. He's super fun. He's got provokes. He's got, uh, he will carry you through finite no problem because of his reflect damage. He will help you with the magma dragon because of his provoke. He's kind of cool in the arena as well as your go second champion. Provokes all of the enemy team. And then when they try and hit him, he provokes them again. Um, he also takes reduced damage with every hit coming in. So, pretty cool. I feel like he needs, actually, a little bit of a buff to his damage. If he had a, just a notch up on his damage, then he would be insane. Right now, I think he's strong. Would I pull Void Charge just for Angar? Probably not, actually. So, Void Charge, you kind of need to make that decision. But, yeah, still, he's a strong legendary. He's not weak. If you get him, you should not be upset. So, there you go, guys. Look. Great champions, actually a great event that they're doing as well. But we do know that in five days, we've got a new fusion that we know is strong coming around the corner. You make your own decision on this one. I'm going to make mine. Good luck if you are going to pull shards. I've been Hell Hades. I will see you later.